Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so is there any noise from my side? There is some potential noise source nearby. Is there any noise that you can hear? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay, so today is like more of open session, but uh, before I let you ask good questions, I just want to clarify a few things that we discussed in the last session. So I'll finish that and then you can go ahead and answer sorry ask questions right so this there is one not not essentially not what i would call a mistake but uh, so if you remember there was this slide on variance maximization right so i was telling you that the variance of the data set along one direction w is given by this formula right so here Notice the in the diagram I had written down x xi transpose w square, right? So it's actually xi transpose w. The variance that we are computing is the variance in the pro scalar projections, right? So it was xi transpose w square, but it should not be xi transpose w square in the diagram. It should just be xi transpose w, and you want to find the spread of these scalar values. Okay, the spread of these scalar values is nothing but the this formula right that you see here okay so i hope there are no confusions about that part the second point that i wanted to specify was regarding this slide so you recall we are we were discussing about uh, a new coordinate being formed right so you can view the first principal component or any principal component as a linear combination of features right this is something that we had mentioned and that is still valid but in the exam in gen or in general right when we say first principal component what we mean is this vector w1 okay so that's what we mean when we say the first principal component the second principal component is w2 so on right so that is what we mean so the way you should understand this part is that yes that is correct but you can also think about the projections on these principal components as new features right and how are these new features obtained by linearly combining the old features so these are two things that i wanted to clarify okay there's one more point this one slide which i think not which i have added it new this is like a summary of ta okay so most of the important formulas that you associate with the algorithm are here Right, so I'll very quickly go through this and then you can ask questions uh, in general. Okay, so what's happening is you have a data set D given like this, Xi is in Rd, so D dimensional data set. And your aim is to minimize this, this reconstruction error, right? So you want to minimize this reconstruction error. And uh, it turns out that the this formulation leads you to the covariance matrix. If it is centered, it is sigma xa xa transpose by n. And uh, the reconstruction error minimization is equivalent to variance maximization. So that is this formula. And so solving this optimization problem requires you to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues that is given these two bullets, right? So, so far, we have solved this problem. Now, what are these called? These are called the principal components. If you have a d dimensional problem you'll have d principal components always right and they'll all be pairwise orthogonal that is this okay and they'll have unit norm okay so they that is the property of these principal components it is also the kth eigenvector of c covariance matrix right that is also there so what is the projection of a data point along one of these principal components is just w transpose w k x transpose w k w k Okay, and if you want to reconstruct the data point x using just the top k such principal components, this is how you do it. Okay, and the variance along 
one such principal component will be nothing but the eigen value lambda k and how do you choose the value of k you use this formula for choosing the value of k it's a heuristic okay so that is what i wanted to cover from my side so now you can if there are any questions you can what to uh, are there any questions hello am i audible hello, hello sir. yeah yeah sir can we take an example say with the data set real data set uh that won't help you because real data set in the sense what i mean data set with numbers and that can help us to solidify the concept discussed in the slides okay see I, this is something that has been going on since last term and unfortunately i don't believe in that part right so see that won't help you solidify the concepts that will maybe help you solidify the arithmetic that you do right yeah Right. So that is something you'll have to do, I'm afraid. Right? So we have given you all the tools to work with. Now you will have to work with the tools. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I was trying to solve uh, for the uh, lambda case and w case uh, with the help of uh, NumPy. And uh, actually, when I uh, put the command uh, NumPy dot uh, linear algebra and you know trying to get the eigen vector and eigen values of matrix it was giving the gl component also like you know it was giving my answer in a complex form although the uh, the component which was attached with the gl uh, vector identifying that it's a complex one was zero but still uh, i could not get the answer which which was you know is matching with that of the programming assignment there i looked after the commands also the command is same prior to that you know the calculation of c was also correct but the extraction of uh, eigen vectors and eigen uh, values using that uh, numpy command it was not giving the correct answer okay so that's because you are probably using a, a very generic command you, there is a specific one for symmetric matrices okay so okay, i sir. i just uh, maybe explain that part so i have a collab in front of me and so let's say let's take one symmetric matrix okay so take one some symmetric matrix assume that that is how the covariance matrix looks like let's say it looks like one n n one okay so this is some Covariance matrix for a two-dimensional data set. Two by two. Yes. Okay. So you have to, if you want to obtain the eigen values and eigen vectors for a symmetric matrix, yes. there is one linear uh, yes. right? eigen e i g s. Right. So it should give you only real values. It cannot return uh, complex values. Right. So if you if you go ahead and look at the eigen values. You will see that they are okay. Yes, it's okay, real. So they are real. So, so I'll, I'll work it out again. Maybe some issue with my command sure, yeah. as such. Okay. Uh, excuse me. May I ask any question? Yeah. Okay. So I had a couple of questions. The first one being, uh, let's say if I, uh, let's say I have, there's, I'm given a data set and let's, let's say it's three dimensional data set. And okay. I'm asked to find the two principal components. So in that case, uh, my ultimate goal is to basically, I mean, I although know the theory behind it uh, and how to brute force it, but should my ultimate goal uh, would be to find the two eigen vectors of the covariance matrix? Would that give me the two principal components? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. You are right. Okay, so that was my first question. Thanks. Uh, and the second question is basically related to this programming assignment. I have not went through the uh, additional lectures that were given for the NumPy. 
Okay. Uh, and so if I go through that, should uh, would would I be able to attempt the programming assignment? Or... Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Could you go back to the previous slide? Uh, over here, we are saying the variance of D along the kth uh, principal component is uh, lambda k, right? It's uh, lambda k, yeah. So basically, we are saying uh, the eigen uh, value, eigen value of the kth um, eigen vector uh, is uh, lambda k, right? And it's computed in this manner. It's lambda k, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have these Ws? Uh, we do have these. So the Ws, we are asking, OK, if, in general, if someone asks me to compute the variance, will they give me WK or not? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, how would we calculate this variance? Or did we just simply use the formula of variance? Uh, <laughs> so it might work both ways. In general, if, if you're asked, what is the variance of your data set along the kth principal component, usually you will be given WK. I see. Along with the covariance matrix or the covariance matrix, any house we can derive. OK, yeah. So I'll just give you a general workflow of if you are given a problem, what you have to do. So this is more of a, I would say, In general workflow is as follows. So first thing that you do is you'll be given a data set. Okay, so I think Shahid also I think asked for an example. So let's do one uh, very quick example if you if that is what will help everyone. So yes. what we'll I'll do is I'll do two dimensions because that is easier. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you have a data set like this. I'm going to put in random values. So 1, 2, 0, minus 1, 3, minus 5, uh, let's say 2, 4, and uh, minus 5, 3. OK, so this, this is the data set that we have. And this is a. Uh, Sir, here we have five different data points with uh, in two dimension. Yeah, so we have five different data points in R two, right? So in R two, right? So we have five data points in R two. So uh, what is the value of n and d? And n is equal to five, and d is equal to two. Okay. So this is step one, right? So this is generally given to you, or at least you start with this. Now, this is the first step, right? Now, what what is what do you think is going to be the second step? Is it to find the covariance uh, matrix? C matrix, really. Okay, even before that, there is one step. Uh, centering, Cent of centering of data. Centering of data. Yes. You have to center the data set. So uh, let's see first. Let's ask the question if it is centered or not. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the following, which is I'll take the sum of all the vectors, right? So in this case, i goes from 1 to 5. So, and that will be, that will be what? 1, 2 plus. Uh, okay, let's just uh, put in all the things here. It's okay, so 1, 2 plus 0 minus 1. Can someone tell me what they are? I'll just enter them. I think the answer is 1, 3. Oh, it's it. Yeah, the answer, I'll, I'll come to the answer. I'll just. Sure. 3 minus 5, 2, 4. Minus 5, 3. Minus 5, 3. So what does this? Turn out to be one comma three. Okay. 
one three is it three four five six six minus five okay four three seven nine okay one three okay so what we have to do now is uh, average this is the mean okay, so this is the mean mean will be equal to what equal to one fifth one fifth of this so one fifth of the whole thing this again one fifth so this is finally going to be what one fifth of that this point two and point six that correct finally okay so we have done this now what what is the how do we center the data set now we have to subtract the, each point okay so we have to subtract the mean from each point so i i just call it d again uh, i'm just abusing the notation here uh, but i think you will understand what yes. we are up to so i'll i'll not do the whole thing i'll just copy the data set and uh, you have to just do a minus point two, right? So this becomes point eight. This becomes uh, one point four. Minus point two. Minus one point six. Eight. Two point eight. Uh, minus five point six. Point eight. Three point four, right? Yes. So this will yes. be what? Uh, 5.2 and this one will be minus 2.4 be 2.4 right so this is d again i'm calling it d but you know that it's centered just to verify it this is uh okay so let's not verify it now let's move on hope that calculation is correct so if you are provided with this data set at the beginning then you are saved the first step the second step right so so we are here now now what should we do Find the covariance matrix. We have to find the covariance matrix, right? So we have to find the covariance matrix. Now, what is that? How do we do that? One by n. X i into x trans. One by n. Okay, one by n. Into sigma x x i transpose into x i. Is it sigma x i x i transpose, right? We, we, all, we always have to do this. Uh, you have to remember that it's not XA transpose XA, XA, XA transpose. Uh, this is outer product, I suppose. Yeah, this is the outer product. Does it make a difference? It does make a difference, right? Because XA transpose XA is the dot product. It will give you a scalar. Scalar, yeah. Okay, okay. And this will give you a matrix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, see, this is, this is like. He will never ask you to do this in the exam, but still, uh, this is like oh, big dramatic. Helps in understanding. <laughs> yeah. So I just do it for one, and then for the other, I will show you how to do it in NumPy. Okay. So then, point eight. So X I is what X I. Each X I is a column of the matrix. Yeah. So it is zero point eight. Zero point eight and uh, one point four. Right. So one point four. Let's first do this. I'm I'm putting an equal to here because not actually equal to, but so you have yes. to do point eight. Uh, so how do you do this? The way you do it, do this is think about it is you take the first column and then multiply it by the first element here. So it's point eight times point eight and one point four times point eight. Right. So this is. How it works and same thing 1.4 but then you multiply it by the second hello there 1.4 okay so this is just one this is just x1 x i have just written down x1 x1 transpose you have to similarly do for this one this column third column fourth column fifth column okay so you'll get and you'll end up with how many two by two matrices Five. 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 five of them, right? And you have to add the simple addition, right? So uh, we are not going to do all that because I think that level of yes, I don't think you need that, right? So 
Instead, what I'll do is I will. Uh, I will copy this and go to the lab. Lab, the, the code is actually very simple. It's very easy to learn this. Uh, is my collab visible now? Yes. Uh, yeah, it is visible. So, this is our data set, right? So, this, this is a data set. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a matrix or an array, as we call it, in upside, out of this data set. So, it's, it's whatever is there, you just enter those values here. So, 2.8, 1.8. Minus 5.2, and then you have 1.4, you have minus 1.6, you have minus 5.6, 3.4, and 2.4. Right? So, this is your data. If you want to see how it works, whether it's correct, then I'm sorry. We didn't close something. What is it that we didn't close? We didn't close the second bracket. Okay, so. Okay, so if you look at the array, it's the same thing, the same matrix. I'm just calling it an array 0.8, 1.4, so on, right? So this is what we have. And the now last one, I think it's 2.4, not 2.43. Oh, okay. yeah, so this is 2.4, right? So this is 2.4. Now let's just check that we have obtained. Uh, we, we have a center data set with this, just to see if our computation is correct. We have to take the mean of all the columns. So the command for that is b dot mean axis equal to one right so it will give you what is the mean along the columns so we you see that the mean is zero zero right so we have this is just to verify that our data set is centered and we have indeed centered it so that verification is done next step we were actually trying to compute the covariance matrix right so let's not call it d it should be x I don't know why i started with d it's x it's x also x okay let's stick with x so have x with you and then what is the covariance matrix one by n sigma x. one by n sigma so one by n so n is equal to five here yeah, right n equal to five so one one over n into x x i x x i transpose but in terms of matrix, what is it? Is that it? Uh, right, yeah. But before the syntax, in sigma xi xi transpose is the sum of column x0 right. into x0 transpose. Uh, right. So it is x into x transpose, right? It is xx transpose. I hope you all remember that the covariance matrix is nothing but 1 by n xx transpose. Okay, I've just written this here. Now, if you look at the covariance matrix, it will be, be a two by two matrix. It's of this form. Right? So, uh, do you all, uh, are you all fine with this? What, what I have done here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Okay. I've just done this much. So that uh, that art rep represent the matrix, is it? I'm sorry, which one? That at the rate of at the rate of its matrix multiplication. So you have okay. x into x transpose, right? So x is a matrix, x transpose is a matrix. In NumPy, the way to multiply two matrices is using the at operator. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the covariance matrix. Let's copy the output of the covariance matrix and go back here say okay, that this is equal to this okay this is equal to this let me put it in a matrix form this is 7.76 minus 4.12 so do you notice that the covariance matrix is symmetric as it should be and it's d cross d in this case, it is two cross two, right? So these are all checks that you do on the way. It, covariance matrix should always have d cross d, where d is the number of features. And we have, since we are doing a two-dimensional problem, 
C is 2, 2 cross 2. So these are the ticks that you do. Press this. Is it symmetric? In this case, it is. Is it shape of shape D cross D? It is, right? So these two are verified now. Now we have the covariance matrix of this. So what is the next step? In this whole pipeline. Um, to f I mean, what are we trying to do? We are trying to do find the variance, right? Ah, uh, no, no. We are trying to solve the whole PCA problem, right? Oh, the variance yeah. also comes along the way, but. Oh yeah, I guess then the um eigenvectors and eigen values of C. Okay, we have to find the eigenvectors and eigen values of C. Okay, so here is this is the next step. So find the so find the principal components. They are nothing but. Uh, the eigenvector, right? So, they are nothing but eigenvectors of C. Okay, so find the eigenvectors of C. We make this bold. We make this. Okay, I'll call this D, and I'll call this thing X, right? Because that's that's better. Okay, so we have, we have given a data set. And we have found out what N and D are. We have centered the data set. And we have found out the covariance matrix of the data set. We have checked if it is symmetric and D cross D. Now we are at the stage where we have to find the eigenvectors of C. OK, so again, this is mostly you'll be given. So you won't be asked to find the eigenvectors given the matrix, okay? because that would, that would require you to solve this whole problem. And it's not very easy. OK, so what we'll do is, in NumPy also, you won't do it in any other way as simple as this. So there is a function called np.linalch.8h, right? 8h. 8h, if you look at it, is it'll, it'll give you the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix. So this h actually stands for Hermitian. Hermitian is a it's a complex equivalent of a symmetric matrix, which you will, if you are, if you are new to MLF, you will learn this in week, week five, six, right? So, symmetric matrices are a special case of Hermitian matrices. Okay, so for now, you just think about symmetric matrices alone. Okay, so if you plug in C into this black box, what it will return is the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So it is done. It has given you the eigenvalues. It will return them in ascending order. So if you look at it, the smallest eigenvalue will come first. The largest eigenvalue will come last. OK, so that's the way the function works in NumPy. And uh, the eigenvector, what will that have? That will have two eigenvectors of this covariant matrix. First column will be will correspond to the first eigenvalue. Second column will correspond to the second eigenvalue. So is this part clear, what this matrix has done for us? Yes, sir, it is clear. OK, so let me write down the eigenvalues. Are we taking this as our black box? Yeah, this is our black box. Sir, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that we get the uh, eigenvalues in uh, descending order? Using I, this lineage command, I we have to check right. So np dot lineage dot h. So if you if you have a question mark, if you had a question mark, that will give you a help utility. So it returns the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and corresponding eigenvectors and columns. You have to see if there is an argument that that will help us do it in. Uh, because usually the question asks like uh, the top two eigenvectors. Right, right. So, the, yeah, so, I get your point. So, but this, it's not very hard if, to extract them. Okay, so, yes, last we can extract last two entries last in that two. case. Yeah. I see. Okay, so, let's return in ascending order. I don't think there is a utility to do it in descending order, but yeah. Okay, so you have this again. Second values. Let me go and write this down first. In fact, let me print it so that 
effects like this here. Okay, so I copy this. Go here, paste this. Okay, lambda one equal to thirteen point five six. Okay, just retain two this two decimal places of precision, and four point eight four is the second eigenvalue. Okay, now the first eigenvector is what? First eigenvector is this is the first eigenvector, right? Zero point minus point five eight and the column, right? So this is zero point eight two. So I, I have to call this W one. Okay, this is W one. This is the first eigenvector corresponding to lambda one. And uh, W two will be what? Will be minus zero point. Eight one rather eight two and minus zero point eight. Okay, so we are kind of done as far as getting hold of the principal components are concerned. Okay, so this is like a complete description of the problem. But let's do some checks here also, right? We can do some checks. So what checks will you do here? Um, orthogonality of the icon. W1 okay. and W2 should be ortho okay. normal. Okay, ortho normal, right? So it should be ortho normal, so orthogonality and unit norm. So we can have we have to check these two. Okay, so let's check this. Uh, again, I'll go to I'll check this in numpy. It's, it's easy to check it in your calculator, right? So only two numbers, so we can do that. But I'll just show you how you can check it here. So W1 is what? W1 is the in the eigenvector matrix that I have, it's the last column. Yeah, that's how you extract the last column. The second eigenvector is nothing but the first column, right? So this is how you extract it in numpy. Okay, so this is the eigenvector, and lambda one is eigenvalue of minus one because it's in ascending order. Lambda two is eigenvalue of zero. Okay, so this is this is how it is. So the first check is W1 transpose W1. Okay, W1 transpose W1. So in NumPy, it's kind of the way it is built, you can the dot product works like this itself. Right? So I'm going to try this. What do you see? This is like okay, I'll just put it this way. This is what? This is W1 transpose W, W1. What do you notice? Norm equal to one. Norm equal to one, right? So that is verified. Next one is W2 transpose W2. Let's print that also. What do you expect? Something similar, right? Okay, again, see, there'll be precision errors, right? There'll be like, won't be exactly one then but this is for all practical purposes this is one okay, so next we try orthogonality w1 transpose w2 and uh, let's try that so w1 is there w2 is there okay, that is zero zero okay so the eigenvectors are orthogonal they are ortho they are they have unit norm therefore they are orthonormal okay so that part is clear, clear. Okay, let me get back to this. So this works, this works. Oh, there is one more check. This alone is not enough. Ideally, you, you must do one more check. What is that check? Uh, I have a question in uh, that um, collab, Google collab. You did not do, uh, when you were finding the uh, norm, we were not doing W1 transpose into W1. I mean, the NumPy did not require us to do the T as we did when we were finding the covariance matrix. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So that is because NumPy treats vectors as. So, yeah, so num, that's, a, that's peculiar to NumPy. Uh, for now, I will. You just let it rest because. Yeah. Right? So. Okay. So arrays work like that, right? So numpy arrays, there are there's a concept of 
a dimension of an umpire array and a vector is treated like a single dimensional umpire array and that dimension is different from the dimension we talk about here okay right so uh, you can do it so the other way is if you find that if you find that confusing there is uh, there is a function called np dot dot okay it will give you the dot product between two vectors you could use okay. that so if i use this i can essentially replace uh, this with this so that uh, we don't have any confusion about the transpose and yeah yeah so you can do this so this will be np dot dot of Actually, w2 so comma there was a question in practice assignment that uh, multiplication of two vectors what it will result and there were three options actually uh, dot product was also involved and uh, the uh, matrix multiplication was also involved so actually then i came to know that uh, even the uh, matrix multiplication will also produce results like dot product if it's a single vector right right you are right the vector form right that's correct right so maybe this is easier np dot dot uh, of two vectors maybe that makes it easier Okay, so there is one more check. Like, if we if we look at the check, what is the check that we have not done? C W one is equal to lambda one W one. Good, good, very good. Right, so we have not done the Eigen vector Eigen value check. Right, so all this is fine, but how do you know that it's an Eigen vector? Of course, we trust NumPy, uh, but just to be sure, let's see if C W one is is lambda one. W one, right? That is what we want to see. Uh, how do you see that? Let's see C. So C is a d by d matrix, right? And C W one is as simple as C at W one. Okay, this simple mat. This is how simple matrix multiplication works. Now so let me just do that. Okay, so the last entry that you see here, that is the result of doing C W one. Now. Let me also do lambda one w one. Lambda one is what? Lambda one into w one, right? So I'm multiplying a scalar and a vector. So instead of at, I have to use the star. Okay. So now let me do both of them one after the other. I focus on the last two values, and you notice that they are the same. Okay. So we have convinced ourselves that this is indeed the uh principal components of this data set okay so uh, roughly speaking this is what we need to understand okay so we are done is cross checking so this is just cross checking yeah yeah you don't need to do this because like numpy is if you trust numpy you don't need to do this but uh, just to be safe so what is it this plot test sir i can vector i can value the first two are clear sir the right. test is just to see that w1 and w3 we how did we find w1 and w2 we we passed it into a some black box which gave us the eigen vectors and eigen values of c right so i'm just making sure that they are indeed eigen vectors and eigen values of c okay 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 so that is solved and sir just one you know i missed something in between sir like uh, related to covariance matrix sir that's a real matrix right yeah so why did we go for hermitian because as you said the hermitian deals with complex uh, complex matrices right so numpy has a utility called num np dot eigen h eig h which will so the spectral theorem right whatever we discussed we were you there in that linear algebra yes yes i was there in last class yes yeah so that spectral theorem actually works in the more general case of him hermitian matrices okay so what we what we have written down as the spectral theorem is for a specific case of symmetric matrix it's a it's like subset of hermitian matrices right so the theory is holds good for a much larger class of matrices okay okay so that is why got it so even that real matrix we are treating it as a complex matrix right uh well we you know i won't say we, that we are treating it as a complex matrix but the function will also work if the matrix is real Uh, that function is common for both complex matrices as well as for yeah yeah right so yeah. correct got it thank you sir okay. okay so there is one step that let us do which is to G sorry gp lot of other data like data from physics experiments and all have uh, complex values so it works right. for both 
So that's why we are using H, right, in the function. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so there is one one more step we'll do, which is to plot the data and see, visualize the principal components. Okay, so the way to do it is these are all standard recipes. Okay, and this is a plotting facility called Matplotlib, and uh, this is I'm just making sure that. My figure size is large enough for me to view. Okay, so these are all for like your spelling mistake import. All right, thanks. Import. These are standard recipes. Okay, so X. You have to plot X, and uh, how do I plot? I use what is called a scatter plot, right? I I need to plot a bunch of data points, so I use what is called a scatter plot. And uh, how how do these how does it work? You have to first fill in the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. So the x coordinate is nothing but what is the x coordinate here in this from this matrix? What is the x coordinate for the data points? First row. First, first row, right? So first row is obtained like this, right? X zero is the first row. In fact, uh, this will work. Okay, so let's try and see how it works. Okay, this is. All over the place. There are only five points. Okay, so this you, you may not get the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the graph a bit wider. So it is currently from a minus five to three on the x-axis. I'll just make it a minus twenty to twenty. Okay. Likewise, I'll make the y-axis from same range. I mean, this won't help the this won't help for small data sets that much, but uh, this will at least give you a slit, slightly higher view of what's happened. Okay, now, now let's look at the principal component. We, we got W1, right? So, W1 is what? May I ask one question here? So, yeah, yeah. Lambda into W, where is the output, please? This one. Okay. Right. C. This is C into W one. This is yeah. lambda one into W one. Okay. 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 So now let's uh, see. Plotting this here is not uh, maybe the best thing. Let's look at W one. Why was W one? This is W one, right? Minus point five seven and point eight one five two. Okay. Minus point. One so this this is W one right minus point okay, minus point five seven and point yeah, eight right three, yeah okay so we have to plot W one okay so this is what is the first principal component going to be geometrically what is it straight line it's a straight line right so this it's a straight line and uh, to Use x comma y as your coordinate axis, right? So let's say this is the x axis, this is the y axis. Okay. Now, what is the equation of the straight line? Y plus mx. Mx plus c. Okay. Y equal to mx plus c. There is no c apparently, right? There's because no c because it's passive mx. origin. Yeah. Right. So what is the m value here? The x coordinate of W one? Ah, uh, no, not really. It's going to be the. Move the base. Y divided by x. Okay, it is y yeah, divided yeah. by x. So uh, in terms vector, of we get the vector. Right. In terms of the array, what is it? In terms of yeah. W of one divided by W of one. Okay, that is correct. So W of one divided W one of one divided by W one of zero. That is the y coordinate by the x coordinate. Right? This is this is m. Okay, so y equal to this m x. Okay, so this I'll first compute this m here. So this will be my m and my. How do I plot this? The way to plot this is so. I mean, this is. Maybe new queue. We have to divide this. 
x axis into a grid of points right so i just run this across uh, run this and you will you will understand what x is so copy this and do it here so when i say x dot np x equal to np dot lint space of minus 20 20 what i'm doing is i'm dividing the x axis into from minus 20 to 20 that is my x axis i'm dividing it into 50 equal points you understand like 50 equally spaced intervals 50 is by default uh, by default so let's say if 0 to 10 and i do it i have nine points uh no not nine points uh, there is uh, 11 yeah 11 will make it 1 to 10 right yeah 0 to 10 so what i've done is i've divided the interval from 0 to 10 into 11 equally spaced i mean 11 points which are equally spaced so there are you notice 11 points here and the spacing between any two consecutive points is one okay so why am i doing this this is how i'll be able to plot some function like y equal to f of x so at, at the point zero i'll i'll plot f of zero at one i'll plot f of one okay by default if i don't include this third argument it will give me 50 points including the left and right end points right? including 0 and 10 it will give me 50 points okay so that is what i'm going to do here and i'm i'm going to say that x equal to np dot link space of minus 20 comma 20 and y equal to m into x as simple as that and just go ahead and plot x and y okay so this is what we get as the first principal component. Is it surprising? In, I think I should have asked what it would be before. Let's, let's just look at this. How do you think the variance is high along this, right? It's, does it seem convincing? Yeah. So I was like thinking the other way around. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I also was thinking that I mean, yeah, you to thinking the points are too close. Yeah. Correct. Right. Okay. Anyway, but I think this is this makes more sense because they are like, yeah. If you, if you look at the perpendicular, it may be. Yeah. Here, uh, W one is not passing through the origin. Uh, no, no, it is. In fact, I have to draw the origin. One second, let me draw the origin. So, on as a command. Yeah, PC always uh, passes through origin, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, second, there is a I am going to copy this from I'm going to copy this from the website from the popular website called Stack Overflow. Okay, so I'm just copying that. These three lines will give us the grid as well as the okay, right? So this is how the first principal component looks. Okay, it passes to the origin and it is in this direction. Now let's also for completeness draw the second principal component. This is M1, let's call this M1, and we have to compute M2. M2 will be what? Tell me what will be the formula of M2? W21 divided by W20. So that is M2x. I'm plotting PLP, comma. I'm plotting x. The first principal component is the second principal component. And okay, so notice that they are orthogonal right so they are orthogonal and uh, this is the direction along which variance is maximum and this is the second principal component and second direction okay. sir why the points are not on the line here points are not on which line on the principal components principal points will not be right on the principal they need not be right 
points do not change in fact so one way to understand the principal component is to uh, is to think about the xy plane being rotated by some angle so that you orient it in in such a way that it is along the direction of maximum variance and so on right so you have kind of rotated the so your standard question, yeah uh, if we if we take the uh, uh, distance between the first uh, projected points and the uh, and the actual data set and uh, if we draw those points will they be on the second line because if it's a two by two matrix then all the differences should lie on the line because that is how we com completely capture all the different components if uh, sorry sorry i didn't get it can you yes sir i'll repeat back yeah i'll repeat my question again like what we did we first had the data points we projected onto our first principal component right we found the project projected points then we took the difference between the actual data set and the projected points that d1 like what we have now x minus x uh, wt whole into wt right. so we got the difference then again what we did we took we again plotted these differences as a vectors and then we uh, took our w2 the line the second uh, principal component so will those uh, different points they will lie on this w2 ah uh, you are saying you are asking if the residues yes the residues they should lie on the second principal component if there is a two if it's a two by two uh, dimension matrix because only then there will be exhaustive for two features we have complete two rounds and two principal components and all the information will be captured for these data points on these two principal components uh yeah so the residues will actually lie on w2 but uh, yes. the points will not change right uh, you are not asking you are not asking whether the points will no no i no 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 points will not change i am only asking the residues they will fall on the second uh, uh, w2 component yeah 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 that's true in fact we'll do that because i think that we can do that part actually so we can ask because sir yesterday i was attending one workshop on r this visualization in r so there the uh, limitation of uh, pca was discussed and they said that it assumes linearity because uh, if uh, the points are in a three dimensional and if they are do not if the projections do not lie in a plane then pca will not give the true approximation or the results may not be true that is correct that is correct yeah in fact that is the whole whole discussion of week 2 right is interested in week 2 kernel functions and transformations yeah the whole discussion of uh, non linearity and how to work with that is in uh, week 2 right but you are correct you are right if it is not linear then pca is not such a good thing okay. thank you sir okay so we'll maybe look at the projections and uh, try to plot them as well but before that i'll just show you one since we are in we are looking at this particular diagram right i'll just show you something that completes or kind of completes the whole thing okay so I've drawn this for some data set, right? Similar data set. I just want to stress on a few things, right? So E1, E2 is nothing but your X, X, Y, X, right? Standard basis. And uh, we did all, all of the things that we have done so far. I have just written it here. So you have X, which is like this. We should go to the left. Okay, and then you find the coherence matrix. Assume that it's centered and you find the coherence matrix. Okay, now, you will get D. D is basically what? The diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues of C. Okay, in our case, it will be just uh, lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2, right? That will be D. And uh, Q will be what? Q will be just this matrix that we have, right? Putting this into the first column, putting this into the second column, you will get Q. And uh, Q transpose Q, you know, is I. Okay, so. Order okay. Now, I think all this is clear to you so far. Now, can someone tell me what Y is? What have I done with Y? 
what do you think why is um some kind of rotation that is correct it's some kind of rotation but uh, yeah that is correct uh, apart from that what is why oh basically the oh. element of left lens null space right so may i continue uh, yes yeah yeah so basically we have rotated the axis so basically now uh, initially all the data points are with respect to e1 and e2 now they are with respect to w1 and w2 so okay. we have rotated them uh, anti clockwise yeah okay right so it's correct so what is why we have changed the basis from e1 e2 to w1 w2 and why gives you the coordinates of these whatever 10 or n data points in this new coordinate system can everyone see that because that's like important so q transpose x i'm not getting yeah so, so here w2 becomes x x axis and w1 becomes y axis uh w1 becomes the new x axis and w2 becomes the new y axis right so, so it will rotate in, in clockwise direction. I mean, here it's anti-clockwise, but uh, I may it, it may not be the yeah. It, in, in this case, it's anti-clockwise, yeah. right? So y is what? Y is Q transpose x. So let me perhaps. What are e one and e two? Uh, which one? E one and e two are nothing but your standard basis, right? One zero zero one. Okay. So what is Q transpose X? Q, Q transpose is what? What is the first row of Q transpose? Uh, w1, right? Yeah. This is W1 transpose, right? Just to yeah. make sure that we are consistent with the rotate notation. Yeah. So second row will be W2 transpose. These are two row vectors. Yeah. Now uh, let's add one column. So this is. Sorry, it's not vertical, this is horizontal. This is also horizontal. Okay, so this is Q transpose. Now, X is what? I just copy X from here. So this is Q transpose X. Okay, now think about standard matrix multiplication, right? W1 transpose X1. That will be my first. First quantity. What will be my second quantity here? It will be. What will this be? W two transpose. This will be W two transpose x four, right? So. Oh. And then I just continue this. Okay, this is like dot dot dot. So this is a two cross n matrix. So remember, x is a two cross n matrix because x is lying in two dimensional space. Now, y is also a two cross n matrix. So what will be the last column of, of y? W1 transpose into xn. xn. So w1 transpose xn and w1, sorry, w2 transpose xn. That will be the last column of so now can you see, can you tell me what the columns of Y are? Scalar. Correct. Scalar projections. Correct, right? So they are the scalar projections of the data. In fact, it's the scalar projection. Let's say this is this is X1. Let's, let's say this is X1. Then what is the first element of Y is this? Is this distance right? I mean, not the horizontal one, right? Let's let me just okay. So I just make this bold. We make this thicker so that it's visible. Okay, so is this clear? This horizontal difference. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So this horizontal, this first element, that is nothing but this horizontal distance. 
the second element here is nothing but this vertical distance. So what you have ex essentially done in doing this Q transpose X is you have changed from the basis E1, E2 to W1, W2. So you are now in the principal component basis. You are you are looking at the same data set in a new coordinate system made up of the principal components. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you, so you can now kind of forget about X. Now, let's, let's look at Y. Now, can I ask, what is the covariance matrix of the data set in this new coordinate system? I'm, I'm allowed to ask that question, right? After all, I can represent the data set in any basis I want. What is the question? So the question is, can I, I can now, I mean, it's not a question, it's more of a statement. I can now choose to compute the covariance matrix of the data set in a different basis. Yeah. I am allowed to do that, right? Now what I'm doing is, I'm computing the covariance matrix of the data set in this new basis, W1, W2 basis. So do you all agree that it is one by N Y, Y transpose? Yeah. Okay, now I'm just substituting what Y is. Y is what Q transpose X. So, and Y transpose is X transpose Q. So how do I go from this step to the next step? What 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 happened? Bracket manipulation. OK. And how did C come about here? Uh, this is XX transpose. That is XX this. transpose is there. That's right. The right. bracket should be shifted. Right. So XX transpose by N is C. So C comes in. And you see that Q transpose CQ is nothing but the diagonal matrix, right? Because Q, Q transpose is I, and if you multiply this matrix on the left and right by Q and Q transpose, or rather Q transpose and Q, you will end up with the diagonal matrix. So, yeah. right, so what is the diagonal matrix? The diagonal matrix is diagonal matrix, right? Exactly, right? It's just lambda 1 and lambda 2, because here it's a 2D case, so it's, so what, what have we done? What, why is this significant? We have diagonalized the matrix, right? To get okay. the eigenvalues. Correct, but uh, this covariance matrix in this new basis has, is what? If you have got the top eigenvalue, the directions, that's what it says. The, the eigenvalues corresponding to the covariance matrix of the original data point. Ah, uh, okay. So, okay, wait. What I'm saying, what I'm asking is, so this is the question I'm asking. So I, I have the covariance matrix in the new basis, right? That is what is C prime, correct? That is what is C prime. Now I'm, the question I want, I'm asking you is, you see that this is this diagonal the, matrix. The eigenvalues are the same for both the matrices. Uh, that is correct. That is correct. But what is significant about about this about about c dash or the entire transformation c, c prime or c, c prime dash. yeah c prime covariance matrix in this new basis c prime is diagonal so what does it say there's no covariance term like the mixed term correct right that's the important point so the last few minutes of week one's lectures is about this right so sar would have talked about weight height and then doing weight plus height by two, weight minus height by two. And then you would have made this term. That so is the features are decorrelated? Ah, exactly, right? You would have said this, yeah, you would have made this important term that the principal components end up decorrelating your features, right? That is what is the main takeaway, right? The covariance term is zero in the new basis or in the, in the basis of principal components, it's as though you can independently look at each direction, right? Without any correlation between the two directions. Uh, Srikant, sir, I'm actually oh, sir. confused with something more fundamental. Uh, uh, now I'm a bit confused. Can we go back to the earlier presentation you had last last presentation? Just just I'll take thirty seconds. Should I open it and show it, or would you have access to it? Uh, no, no, I. Uh,
Yeah, which slide here? No, no, the early, no, no, not this presentation. The earlier one. The collab. The, 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 the last Friday we when we last Thursday I think. Ah, okay. Ah, they, okay. This one, this one, this one. Okay, the uh, the uh, the linear combination slide. I think towards the end. Ah, uh, just before this. Yeah. See, sir, we are now. I first initially thought otherwise, but X is uh, D into N matrix. Yeah. Correct. And W is uh, D into one. Yeah. Yeah. So the result is n into one. Uh, result of what? Of these two multi the x transpose into w. No, x is d into one, right? Correct. X is no, no. X not in not here. In uh, so when we take the entire data set, I'm just getting confused here because of that uh, principal component. So so we get the principal component on the entire data set. Yeah. So if I have to get the principal component, how would I do the matrix multiplication? Uh, principal component is obtained from solving that eigenvalue problem, right? You find the eigenvalue of the eigenvector of the covariance matrix to get the principal component, right? The principal component is. Uh... So when I say principal component, I mean W1. Right. So what I have written here is, is actually that's why I, I mentioned this at the beginning of the session. This is, this is not the principal component, right? This is the scalar projection on the principal component. What this slide is telling is, uh, this gives you a linear combination of the features. Okay, I got confused with this oh. because the result has to be a d-dimensional vector. Because yeah, W1 is a d dimensional vector. Right? The principal component is always a d dimensional vector. What this slide is only talking about how do you extract the or how do you look at the scalar projections on the principal component? So maybe I should rename this as scalar projection on PC. Yeah, that's what like has killed me. I was getting I was getting very confused. Okay, got it. Yeah. Will okay. you change it here, sir? Will you change it now so that I will download the latest version? Later version. If you can uh, so I, I have to go to a different tool. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay, so any questions on this? Whole yeah, when I, you're right. It's PC is a, a line or a hyperplane. Uh, here in the last matrix. Yeah. I think. Uh, I didn't understand this. You are saying we have changed the basis from the standard basis to uh, the principal components being our axis, right? Yeah, yeah. And you said something about this uh, W1 transport X, transpose X1 being uh, the projection of the principal component on X1. I didn't understand. Oh, no. uh, yeah, so the, that... the W1, so actually, yeah, maybe this is. Written is better written as x1 transpose w1, but yeah, so it is the projection of this point x1 onto w1 onto the first principal component. So the first element here is the projection of x1 onto the first principal component, and the second element is the projection of x1 onto the second principal component. Okay, it's the projection of the original data point on the two principal components. Yeah, yeah. So the okay, the first element of the column is is the projection of x one on w one and on the second one on w two. Yeah, exactly. So in fact, if you if you remember the slides, what we would have talked about is if you can represent the point x i as in terms of the principal components as x i transpose w one w one plus x. I transpose W2, W2, so on up to WD. In this case, we have only two Ws, right? So this is the vector or the matrix view of the same thing, right? So 
what I have done is I have just made sure that I have taken only the scalar projections as the coordinates of this matrix. Okay, that is how the change of basis works, right? So I move into the new basis, and in that basis, what are the coordinates? The coordinates will be this much along W1, this much along W2. So I only retain the scalar projections in that new basis. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is our Y. This is the Y, yeah. So the same data set X, which is D cross N, is now represented using another D cross N matrix called Y. And that Y, if you think about it, is the covariance matrix corresponding to that Y is decorrelated. Meaning the off diagonal terms are zero. Okay, I think I need to go through this, but I had understood in Sir's uh, videos about the representation matrix and the coefficient matrix. Uh, so this is our coefficient matrix. Why? Huh? Uh, yes. In some ways. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to ask. I think uh, it was in the PC uh, A1 uh, video. Uh, sir was talking about there being three principal components, W1, W2, W3. Was that just an example or do most of them only form three principal components? I think that was an example, right? He, would, he might have been talking about R3. So He talked about R100. Oh, is it? then maybe he would have been mentioned. Oh, okay, okay. So he would have been talking about how. So he might have chosen only the top three for coming up with a low dimensional representation. Yes, he was so, talking about low dimensional. So do we try to have only three? No, no, that's just an example, right? So there's if you you should choose as many as you want, right? Depending on the heuristic, right? The ninety five percent of variance should be captured. No, so. As long as you capture 95% of the variance, that many principal components you need to retain. The rest you can drop off. Okay. Sir, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know this uh, y is equal to q transpose x. So, was this uh, thought of you know arriving at multiplying x with the transpose of q? I mean, good. Was it an intuitive uh, uh, outcome or uh, some deliberate thought over, you know, multiplying x with something so that we get a y and subsequently y, y transpose will be a matrix which will have all the uh, components decorrelated. So, I mean, whosoever arrived at, whosoever okay. thought at arriving at q transpose x. So was it an intuitive idea that let us multiply this by Q transpose or was it a deliberate thought? Maybe More of, uh, see, it's deliberate in the sense that Q transpose X is going to give you your coordinates in the new basis, right? In that sense, it is deliberate. Okay, and once you go to the new basis, you can ask this question of how my covariance matrix looks, right? From then it is just one step up to the other. But this Q transpose X is done so that you can move to the new basis. Okay. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah, Ravi. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. My question is a little more fundamental. Sorry if I am pulling the entire conversation back. Um, the eigenvalues remain the same, and That's the true. eigenvectors. Because uh, now actually I am on the vector direction. So. Yes. So see the eigen vectors are not going to be the same because so oh, okay they are going to be the same in the sense that you are not talking about uh, so you are, when you say eigen values these Talk are two similar uh, you have, have you done mlf yeah i did i did okay so this uh, there are similar matrices right Correct. so the similar matrices if i believe they have the same eigen values is that correct yeah. Yeah, correct. Okay, so they are the same eigenvalues, but let's ask, let's look at this matrix, right? This uh, Y matrix. Mm -hmm. What are going to be the eigenvectors of the matrix 
not y so y is not even a square matrix so what should we ask yeah let's look at the covariance anyway we are looking at only the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix right so c has w1 w2 what about uh, c prime Yeah, that is where actually I was um, a little caught because when we have W transpose C W, there is something that we have derived. But Correct. when it comes to C prime, what is W transpose and what is W is what I started thinking, and that is where I got stuck. Sorry, what is W transpose? And oh, okay. W. What is W transpose? For C prime. W? Yeah, C C prime. Okay, for C prime, C. Okay, yeah. I put it this way. We have moved to the new basis. Do you agree? Correct. Correct. So one, now that we have moved to the new basis. uh what i call v1 in that new basis is what i mean i i'll call this as 10 in the new basis but what i actually mean is what w1 okay right so i i am so i have to okay so if okay. i ignore it because they're aligned now it is um okay Yeah, so if I call this as my new basis, W one and W two as my basis, and in that basis I'm doing all my arithmetic, right? All my algebra. So right. I, what I call E one is actually W one, and E two is W two, right? But in terms of vectors. Okay. 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 Now the eigen vectors in this case will be W one itself. Right. Okay, because if you multiply this by one zero, you will get lambda one times one zero. Right. Right. So the eigen vectors and eigen values will be the 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 e1 and e2 itself in that basis right right okay so w transpose c w will be lambda 1 right it will come as e, e transpose c c e mm -hmm. and that will be lambda 1 if e1 is e and if it is e2 is e then it will be lambda 2 right right okay uh one more question on this follow up uh shubha yeah. sorry about that um no, no okay problem. we um decorrelate the functions there is no covariance what's the advantage okay good good point uh, so i also I, i won't say i have an answer for this the reason why i am asking is because numerically i have the matrix the previous c itself what advantage the c prime actually give me on the computational basis that i need to actually do this okay i will agree if you say it has to be, if it is transformed the computations are easier but are they easier is the question i want to actually do uh, ask that's the only thing okay computationally uh, i i'm i don't see how it has made anything easier because see what we'll do is so you have so you have n cross d matrix correct and you you do what you can convert it into an n cross k matrix okay and then you for you know in a principal component sense right you have x yeah yeah is n cross b and then you come up with say x prime and calling that x prime x prime is b m national to let you that's my question that's my question x is n cross b or d cross n for yeah this is b cross n and b cross k right yeah yeah no uh This is what you are going to work with for any downstream task, X prime, right? So I don't see how, in what sense, you will still be yeah. thinking about the correlation, but I am not sure, right? I don't, I don't have an answer. No, I can. Maybe what is the what is the I, question? Can I ask what is the question, Ravi? Um, basically, okay, we find C prime. There is decoupling. Then what? Uh, when i was saying dimensionality reduction dimensionality reduction is already arrived at when we found the c and the w's when i just typed something in the chat window when i uh, c itself is dimensionality reduction for us so why do i need to go to c prime what do i get out just, of just go up a little uh, uh, sir sikan just just ha C prime is nothing, just an Eisen value. Well, I already have them in C. Uh, Isn't that the question? Sir, that, that's the reason I'm I, asking. Like, we no, already no, no. have. Yeah, please, somebody. Can I add some things? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, when we arrived at C, it is a variance-covariance matrix. That is, there is an interplay of the uh, features amongst themselves. Correct. the diagonals are represented by the interaction with themselves which is obviously nothing but the variance 
Yes. And uh, interplay between two features is interaction between two features. Right. So possibly to separate out the effect of the interplay between these two features, like what we arrived at C prime, the diagonal entries still give you the variance of the interplay between the same variable. But the interplay between two variables that results in zero, that is by, you know, uh, separating out the noise, what uh, has been achieved is that the interplay between those two variables has been separated and only pure variance of the variables have been taken into consideration. Can I ask a question? On can, this? I, Sir, can, can, I, can I just, yeah. can I just, uh, once, Vinay, once, if you're finished, can I just add, uh, once I, I'll add that, then Ravi, you can ask. Yeah. I, the lambdas, uh, sorry, the diagonal has always been variance. I always yeah. have the variance. Yeah. So, so what covariance is, is removed. Then what? So what is happening is that mm -hmm. in the new axis, mm -hmm. which are orthogonal, because this is basically what this is saying is that uh, I have separated the data such that there is very little correlation between the new data points when it's projected onto these uh, principal components, right? So what it means is, so what it means is, see, what am I trying to do? I am trying to dimensional, I'm trying to reduce the data into manageable number of uh, uh, sub, sub, some sub, sub data set, right? So I'm representing it through some da sub data set. Right. Now I am doing it in such a way that I am putting together similar data and they are projected on similar or whatever the same uh, principal components that way i am maximizing the information without losing much information right uh, which means see these this data projected on the new principal components have very little intercorrelation right uh, that's what it's broadly doing right so such that we preserve maximum information without missing out much of the information when we drop off eigenvector or whatever when we drop off uh, when we consider smaller number of uh, uh, principal components and not the entire all the principal components something to that extent Ravi. exactly i'm not able to respond but yeah. basically the trade off where you have uh, the the after the resultant uh, what do we do with it okay i got the c prime now what no, no, no. I think no, this no, no. is just to enterprise. Yeah, yeah. So, so C prime. No, no. See, now let's say you started with, let's say you have, okay, I'll give you a real time example. See if this <laughs> makes sense. Uh, let's say you have 5,000 customers. Okay. Right. And you have 500 various features. <laughs> okay. Right. A, G, A, O, credit card, history, all kinds of things. Okay. Right. And you want to cluster them in some way to understand which are my best customers or you know, who should I target with new products or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I run this, uh, whatever, 5,000 over 50,000, 50, 50,000 into 500, think it's not a big data set, but a lot of times because of the amount of data you have or whatever, however it's spread, it's kind of creates the noise, right? So this 500 features, I'm going to reduce it to, let's say 50 features. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the age of projected data hai on these principal components, right? That is what I'm going to use going forward for the segmentation and clustering. I will not use the original data set. That bit, you are clear, right? Yeah, that bit I'm clear. That, that bit you are clear, right? Yeah, now, clear. Now, yeah. now, because of this process, this 50 features projected data onto this principal component, this 50 new whatever, is retaining maximum information because each of these principal components or each of these data points are not correlated with each other. That means I'm I'm getting unique information on each of the data point, right? And it's already maximized variance because that's what PCA does to begin with. So I've lost very little information. That's what is broadly doing, right? Then I use that data for all subsequent tasks. I don't use the 500 feature data set anymore. I use only the 50. And this 50 has captured maximum information without losing anything. And that's what is evident from this, this new uh, covariance matrix. That's the broad understanding. So basically, this is for dimensionality reduction, right? I think that's what it's, his question is. Why do we go for it? It's already reduced the dimensions. By when we came to C itself, it has reduced the dimensions. 
now from c i have gone to c prime i am not reducing the dimensions the 50 remain the 50 okay i removed the correlations between the features agreed zeros make it more clear it is only the uh, co uh, sorry it's only the variance that i am looking at for individual features uh, but where are we using c prime i thought c prime is to just illustrate that it, they have very little correlation, intercorrelation. Oh yeah, so see, C prime is a byproduct of the process, right? So uh, you you are see, that's why it, it also comes at the end of the lectures, right? If you notice. Okay. Okay. So we don't are, use we because, don't use C prime data. Okay. From, to it's, the best of my knowledge, yeah, I may be wrong, but yeah. I think this is just shows that it is it is there is hardly any correlation. There is okay. no right. There is in fact zero. I mean, it is decorrelated. Yeah. Is yeah. zero correlation. But in, in reality, there will be some little correlation. Right? It won't become completely zero. Yeah. Uh, no, right? It is actually mm -hmm. zero. I mean, this is... Because we are already projected. Uh, yeah, it is exact zero. There will be no correlation at all. I mean, if you are... Uh, if you think I, about... don't, I don't recall. It's been a while since I did this. But okay, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. So basically, the right C prime is to show that it's uncorrelated. Okay, okay. That's my understanding. I don't think we use this for anything later. Uh, I may be wrong, but uh, that's what I'm. Sorry, somebody else was saying something. Yes, sure, somebody was saying something. Yeah, there's one more question. Someone, so Subha has been raising her hand. Do you want to ask? Yeah, oh, sorry, Subha. We had so, the entire thing. So actually, I have a very basic question. Yeah. Um, uh, so here, uh, xi is equal to xi transpose w1 to w1 below. Xi is. Uh, last here xi am i not wrong like xi represents the ith feature of the data point uh, xi represents the ith data point itself ith data point itself so like uh, complete uh, the features of xi how will it represent sir it will look like this right so xi for example here x1 is 1 2 x2 is 0 minus 1 so how do we represent the ith uh, data point of say if the, if the data point is x1 how do we represent the ith data point of x1 i so x1 is the ith data point right so for example 1 2 is the uh, ith sorry ith feature of uh, x1 x1 uh, x1 i yeah, yeah that is what i get confused because in mlf there is some other representation with superscript for the data point uh, superscript and the feature uh, it is the subscript okay so the convention we use here uh, is that at least that, that's what I try to follow is whenever you see bold, when that's why I keep making them bold. Okay. So anything that is in bold is a, is a vector. Anything that is a lowercase bold is a vector. Anything that okay. is an uppercase bold is a matrix. Okay. And anything that you see as, this is wrong. Okay. So anything that you see as a unbold, okay, which is not in bold is a, is a, is a real number. Okay. Okay. So when, whenever you see XI in bold, it means it's, it's a vector. Like a vector. Yeah. Okay. So, and one more query, sir. So, like for uh, PCA, we are doing rounds, like K rounds, we require to do, right? So, how do we know that we have to do only the K rounds? So, that's the heuristic that Sir mentioned, right? So, the yeah, heuristic the is uh, summation of the lambda by the whole. Yeah. That, basically, that's equivalent to the 0.95, is if I can answer, sorry, if you can. 0.95 yeah. basically says that 95% of the original variance is captured. Okay. okay. Lambda okay. is nothing but lambda is nothing but the variance, right? So, uh, yeah. so if you take you take as many uh, as it requires, 95. So, see, with scientific, good, high quality data, like a clinical trials or you know scientifically captured, 95 is very good. It's possible. But in real time data, where we are capturing you know, all kinds of business data, all kinds of stuff. Uh, typically, anything about 70, 75 is very good. OK. OK. Sir, and one more thing. Uh, like uh, this this we have done, as far we have done, right? We have done only one round. As per my knowledge, this is the first round of PCA analysis? No, 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 no. OK. That is explanation. But all the rounds are already happened. OK, so for the second round, are we not supposed to take the residue of the first round? Uh, that is correct. So you have to take the residue. But uh, what happens is, again, the residue was more of a motivating idea, right? If you can okay. take the residue. But eventually, what it, it would come down to is it will come down to the same problem of maximizing whatever, right? W transpose CW, you saw, right? First. 
will come down to that with additional constraints okay okay so what i mean by that is uh maybe actually we didn't do this that much so if you look at the residue is residue is what xi minus, uh, minus xi transpose w okay so you want to look at this see we have to prove this it's not a such a trivial proof into but, w yeah. into w okay so this is residue for data point i e I'm sorry this is data point i right yeah now you have to ideally do what you have to do uh see the norm of this square then you have to sum over all all of that and then we have to minimize that correct yeah, that error minimization right right so that will if you think about it that you can actually show that that will reduce to this problem of uh, maximizing w transpose cw subject to norm w equal to 1 which is the original problem first round problem that we started off with yeah the additional constraint that w transpose w1 should be equal to 0 zero okay so this is the second round and it will come down to this that is why we can instead of doing all these d rounds we can do it in one go you'll get all the deep eigen vectors and you'll be done okay okay sir okay thank you yeah thank you so much yeah so uh, that's a great sir. question so sikan so this is basically to explain that to when you're minimizing each of the subsequent w's just an orthogonal uh, to the previous one so they become orthogonal orthonormal set uh, of uh, vectors which is nothing but the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix that's the mo it's more for motivation and understanding correct yeah yeah okay. kartik can you repeat the portion i thought we are doing the rounds so now we are not doing it in this process no so we are doing the rounds but uh, see the round 1 round 2 till round d is going to give you w1 w2 till wd right so there is yeah. that is one way of understanding it which is correct Okay. Nothing incorrect. Because in the maximum variance maximization, we don't have to go for it. Is it correct? Uh, so I will put it this way, right? Whether you go, whether you look at it in terms of multiple sequential rounds, or you look at variance maximization, both will end up with in yeah, both cases you end up with the same yeah. problem. So only the rounds is referring to the when we go for PCA without the uh, the minimizing errors. That process we go round by round, right? that process we go round by round yeah so this is actually the easier method variance maximization we automatically get the same thing because the points are project already orthogonal to each other right uh okay so you won't put it that way it's more of uh, yeah see that that portion is kind of little bit tricky we haven't actually expanded on it because it's mathematically it's a bit more involved right so i think that question is still remaining how how is it that these d rounds of activity actually lead you to uh okay at least only in the error minim minimization we go for round by at least in this process whatever we done we are done right we are done yeah yeah we got the maximum variance uh, thing right yeah yeah that see again we don't have to confuse with that uh, rounds right yeah in this process So sorry, you don't have to. No, no, no. So sorry, Shrikant. If I can ask, uh, if I can say something and tell me if this is correct. See, the round one doesn't come in error minimization, length maximization, nothing. The PCI algorithm just decomposes the covariance matrix and it identifies the eigen vectors, which are the principal components. Right? That is that is correct. uh that is correct but the rounds are not irrelevant right the rounds are no, all no, ra rounds i thought correct correct you're right rounds i thought if let's say we didn't have this pca algorithm at all we didn't know about this algorithm at all right we didn't know about eigen decomposition at all right and if we had to start from first principles and do it that is the way we would do it let's say you know one okay. round two round three rounds that happens to be very similar to eigen decomposition so that is an explanation as to it's a it's a motivation it's a theoretical underpinning it is never implemented in any algorithm the no, algorithm only implements yeah yeah the algorithm only implements the eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix that is just an explanation ah uh, yes that is true right so there is no 
this way of implementation that way of implementation there's only one way of implementation which is the eigen decomposition yeah in terms of implementation that is correct but in terms of understanding both understanding yeah, yeah understanding is basically correct correct we are saying that hey if you had to do it from first principles this is how we would approach it and they happen to be orthogonal to each other which is nothing but the uh, eigen vector incidentally there are the eigen vectors of uh, the covariance matrix that's the understanding i have so far correct correct okay okay thanks clear okay uh, so which lambda corresponds to the residuals here which lambda because we actually uh, say uh, um, in when we going for round one and round two we are saying um, one is essentially sorry uh, please correct me i think i got mixed okay. up somewhere no no i think it's so, correct so i would say you know lambda two corresponds to round two right so the first residue if you are trying to minimize the reconstruction error after round 1 which is in round 2 you will get lambda 2 right uh, th that's what i'm trying to ascertain so uh, is that yeah. correct that is yeah, correct okay. right so see there are okay. two ways of looking at round 2 one way is it is the it is the okay i'll just go oh, round 2 right is what is first thing it is the you are trying to minimize the reconstruction error of the residue, right? Yeah. Other way of looking at it is I'm looking at the second, I'm looking for the second direction orthogonal to the first, which maximizes my variance. Okay, assume that, so W1 is already taken. Now I'm looking for W1 is the one which maximizes the variance of the data set. Okay, that's the first direction. Now. You're asking the question, okay, W1 is taken. Now, can you tell me what is the second direction, orthogonal to the first, which maximizes the variance? That will be W2. W2. Okay. Same thing as saying that, how do you minimize the reconstruction error of the residues? You do it in the same way. But you again, because of the way the problem is formulated, because residues are orthogonal to W1, you will implicitly impose this constraint that W the direction you are searching for should be orthogonal to W1, and you will find the same W2 in round two also. Somehow, I don't know why I, I am not able to put this statement one and two together. You've just explained it right now. But I don't know why I'm not able to absorb it, that the fact that we are trying to minimize the reconstruction error of the residual ends up giving us the second direction in which the variances will be maximized. Uh, okay. Link them together for some reason. Yeah, yeah. So I, I understand because see, this requires a more a rigorous argument. So let me try. I I have it somewhere. I will try to compose it and share it. Right. So there are actually two steps here. So first thing that you'll have to show is the W you are looking for is perpendicular to W1. Right. This is the first thing that you'll have to prove. Yes. That will take you one step closer to the second statement. The second step that you have to show is minimizing the residues is very close to the max of W transpose CW. In, in fact, you will come to that, right? So I, I can't show it here because it's it requires a little bit more rigor, okay? And I can't do it, uh, you know, at this. In a live setting, it's very tough for me to do it. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I, I'll try to compose it and maybe share it on this sure. code. Sure. So okay. Um, yeah, may I ask a follow-up question on this one because this yeah. is where um, uh, you mentioned this earlier that beyond three dimensions, imagining is going to be very difficult. But just to ask you, uh, if we continue to have more, um, like okay, W, uh, um, if I have let's say five eigenvalues, okay, then each of them is going to be perpendicular to the other is that what i have to interpret it as yeah all five will be pairwise perpendicular to each other pairwise perpendicular to each other yeah any pairing is going to be perpendicular yeah yeah right so because okay. if, you, if you look at it here yes yeah, if you have w3 if you have a three-dimensional system then you are it will be just a uh, some rotation of your standard xyz axis into some other orientation, right? That is what W1, W2, W3 will actually be. 
So okay. Like it's in R4, right? You can't visualize, but it will be some kind of a rotation. See, See, at the end of the day, if you want to understand, if there's one one image to or one visual to take away from your takeaway, right, is, is the following, right? So you're given a data set. What does PCA do? PCA is doing something like this. That's all. That's mm -hmm. all PCA is doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the computation essentially boils down to rotating E1, E2 such that it orients your axis, it orients this x axis and y axis in the directions of maximum variance. So it will orient W1 such that the variance along the direction is maximum. It will orient W2 in such a direction that variance is second maximum in the direction. That is all it does in the, at the end of the day. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Srikan, just one question again, so that I, I think I understood that motivation explanation round one, round till round D uh, well, but I just have one question. See, yeah. when we, uh, so let's start with D features or D, uh, D, D vector space. Uh, we, we calculate the errors. Now, will the errors all lie in D minus one subspace? Because only then will the W2 be perpendicular to W1. Yeah, they'll all be in a D minus one dimensional subspace, it's orthogonal to W. Correct. Then I've understood. Okay, got it. Once again, can you repeat that, please? Um... See the uh, if I if I start with taking three, let's take three dimensions, right? So mm -hmm. in three dimensions, you first calculate W one from round yeah. one, correct? Then yeah. you calculate the errors. Hmm? Correct. Now the errors will all lie on a plane. Yeah perpendicular, the same plane, perpendicular to W1. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the error is perpendicular to W1, uh, geometrically, right. correct? Right. Now, all right. errors lie on the same plane. Mm -hmm. Now, W2 will also lie on the same plane. Yeah. That means W2 is perpendicular to W1. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you go do that one more step. W3, again, will be perpendicular to W1. W2, as a result, perpendicular to W1. Yeah. So essentially, we've extracted and W's are all or uh, unit norm. Yeah. So we've essentially extracted an orthonormal uh, basis. Yeah. Right. Revised orthonormal basis. Mm -hmm. Right. So here is what the round experiment ex ends. So these W1, W2, W3 also happen to be the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix pertaining to the original data set. Right. Now we've started from three, two, one. We can start from whatever d, d minus one, d minus two till one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh... Uh, I have a question. Uh, this case, um, like we were using NumPy. So supposing we have uh, R five or say R ten. Uh, that is a ten-dimensional data. So will we have uh, 10 principal components in totality and then we select the k so that the variance is greater than or equal to 95 percent? Yes, perfect. Correct. But we will get 10 components. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, sir. Yeah. So if the data, the, the entire data lives in a k-dimensional subspace where k is less than d, so then we would achieve a hundred uh, percent data reduction, right? That is correct. Yeah, you will you will be able to perfectly reconstruct the data using only those many components. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any any other questions? Anyone else? Uh, sir, can you uh, once again please uh, explain uh, what the professor has taught in the last section about the relation between weight and height in this video? So, uh, see what he's saying is that by moving to the principal components, you no longer have any kind of correlation between the features. Do you get what that means? What's the correlation is, you can roughly think of it as this. Yes, if x1, let's say, see here, that you look at x1 and x2, right? e1 and e2. 
If x1 increases, what can you say about x2? Okay. Ruff, roughly, right? Roughly, if you if x1 increases, what can you say about x2? It also increases, right? So think about going from left to right. Okay. As you, so when you are here, roughly it's like there is a trend, right? There is a trend or tendency for x2 to grow as x1 mm. grows. Yes, sir. Okay, roughly. Okay, I mean, it's not exact, but you have to think about it as a very rough way of saying things. Now, when you go to w1, w2, which is what PC does to you, right? It moves you to a new basis. That correlation is no longer there. So w1 and w2 are in the coordinates of the data points are no longer correlated in that space. Correlated. It's evenly okay. spread out at all the Right. So see, to be honest, I also don't have a very clear idea. Of, so this is what I think Ravi also asked before, right? Okay, so what? So what they are correlated? Okay, you can drop off few few dimensions and you can uh, retain the information. But see, the correlation is something that I am not sure if I have a very good grasp on that. So I will get back to you on that part, right? Thanks. Right. Any any other questions? If not, we will can wind it. Sir, one activity question. Yeah. And one point three question number five. Two point three question number five. Okay. Sir, here there is a some constraint that norm of W is equal to one. Right. Uh, because of this constraint, the answer is two. I'm, am I right? Uh, okay, let me just paste it here so that. Um, we know what question it is. Okay, so this is the question, right? You have 100 points. All of them lie on a rain, so you want to choose a representative. Yeah, so what is the question here? The question is here, the answer is two. So the Correct. question is the two answer is because of the constraint. If we remove the constraint that norms of W is equal to one, then the answer will be infinite. No? That is correct. Yeah. If you don't have the norm W equal to one, you can choose infinitely many Ws. Okay. okay. Instead of one norm is equal to one, if we have any any norm, two, three, four, then again the answer will be two. Correct. Any finite norm, uh, any scalar, you can replace one with the answer mm -hmm. will be two. Okay, sir. Otherwise, the inf otherwise infinite. Otherwise infinite. Yeah. Okay. okay any other questions? Uh, sir, yeah. And just you know, a few minutes back we were having a discussion. So Basu quoted an example that you know, say for example, we started with 500 features, and we brought it down to 50 features, right? And we are covering 95% of the variance, right? Right. It, it is just an example. So as a layman, uh, as a layman, so if I have to take it further, like you know. Uh, going beyond 98 uh, or 99. So with the, it means that once again, we will have to go back to more than 400 features. That depends on your eigenvalues, right? Or how much okay. information is contained in the first few, first whatever eigenvalues. Okay. Right? So, typically, sorry, second, if you're finished, I'll add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so typically, with again, I, I've not worked with clinical trial and that kind of data which is very very clean and uh, you know but i've generally worked with brand and marketing data which has a lot of noise typically if you let's say start with 400 500 features the top 20 30 40 features will cover about 70 75 percent of the variance okay after that incrementally you keep adding you will get very 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 little addition so if you want to move from 70 to 80 you'll have to add another 100 features and it's okay. not worth it. 
Okay, yes, yes. So the it's incrementality not, will not be very low. Ah, okay. will be very low. Mm. Typically, that's what happens in real data, with real data. Mm. Yeah, so I just look at it as a heuristic, right? So I am personally more of a theory person, so I don't have a concrete answer for in practice questions, I'm generally bad at in practice because I look at ninety-five percent is like almost like like gold diamond standards. Uh, you'll never find that in the real world. Uh, unless there are like I said, unless there are clinical trials and all that where data is captured under extreme amount of supervision. I think okay. that depends on industry specifications. So yeah. in this specifications also that, yeah. that matters. So generally so bank, financial data will be little better. Then, because it's transactions, right? So it will be a little better. Uh, wherever there is, you know, uh, more open sources of data and all, you'll have a lot of noise. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Uh, when we refer to noise, what do we mean? Noise could mean so many things, right? So noise could mean. So there won't be consistency in there. Like, for example, if you take brand ratings, if I ask you, if I give you 1,000 movies or whatever, 100 movies and get 1,000 people to rate those 100 movies, right, or whatever, 200 movies, it won't be consistent beyond a point, right? People uh, will, you know, uh, will, will kind of after a while, they'll answer whatever they want, or they're not very clear, we're not very sure. So you'll have all kinds of things. Noise basically means... that cannot be modeled. No, no, yeah, can exactly. model. you can model noise also. You it can, can model be modeled. noise. Uh, no, no, actually, suppose there is certain equations y is equals to mx plus c, right? But in the real world, if you try to measure those kind of equations, like the spring constant, uh, you might have uh, basically heard about these things in physics. The spring constant, if you try to measure in the lab, there will be certain variations based on the vibrations, the way you put on the weight, how much uh, uh, vibrations is there, so those kind of situations. So it will not exactly match the spring constant. It will have certain variations. And that 0 0.01, 0 0.02, that, that is what is noise. Uh, I want to correct what I said earlier. Noise modeling is what, not what I meant. Noise will be there even if you take any uh, manufacturing of any components or anything there will be some noise like okay you wanted three millimeters you won't get it as three millimeters it's not possible you will get a little bit of uh, plus and minus so you can actually account for this variations and then make a robust design hmm. that's the way you normally hmm. account hmm. for noise something which you cannot control you will have to live Sort of like errors Errors. You can take exactly. it as error because of uh, any, any, any order reason. Voltage fluctuations. It could be operator issue. It could be the tool wearing down. It could be the machine uh, running at a different speed, uh, slightly. I mean, you want 3000 RPM. You won't get 3000 RPM. You'll get something on the average of 3000 RPM. Not every machine will be at 3000 exact, right? Some things will be a little high. Something will be a little low. So that That's also causes a lot of variations. So like all these variations here. will not give me the exact finish that I want. But so basically, I, I still I want it to have in a power single word. Okay, any means. electronics device that you have bought, it will have major certain fault tolerance on that one. That fault tolerance is the noise. Okay. Tolerance is not noise. Sorry. Yeah. yeah so, tolerance is not noise. So here, here is, there is a fault, and accepting that fault and building it for that fault is building robustness into the system. You yeah. observe the noise, you categorize that this is the range in which it is going to operate, and I'll try to eliminate that, that by using exactly some design features. Noise, noise is not robustness, my dear. Robustness okay. is to can account I, for I, the noise. Can I, uh, can I say something? I'll clarify what I meant uh, and to answer that question. To me, noise is a random error which you can't really systematically okay. take out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, number one. Number two. You can still model if the data, if data is very bad, you can't do anything. But if it's, there will be some amount in real world data. See, again, manufacturing, these are still very highly controlled, right? If you go to marketing, brand, these kind of things, uh, that's where I come from. Sorry, so I only can speak about that. You'll have a lot more of 
uh, noise in that because you know people will say all kinds of things and you know all kinds of and there could be some factors that you may not have considered all kinds of things could happen right and uh, so you will have higher amount of noise but it's still you know having a 70% accurate model is have is better than having nothing right right so yeah you should you can always model to even some of the things which are uh, for example there should be so much of randomness like say let's say you're trying to predict the landfall of a cyclone right? there will be so many thousands of variables uh, to be considered there is no way you can account for all of them okay uh, Basu, the same goes with manufacturing also. That's what Ravi was trying to say that variation like operator to operator. Like you have nicely described as systematic errors or random errors, like which we are never in a position to fix that. Those errors. Correct, correct, correct. So correct. those will always be there. Okay, Basu, just you know, Divya has a very valid question, and that has been my doubt forever. Like, you know, everything depends, all statistical analysis depends on, you know, uh, uh, number of features or number of variables, what we call, right? Hmm. So the, 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 the first thing goes, say for example, because of my incompetency or subject matter expertise, you know, uh, low knowledge of subject matter expertise, if I'm not able to identify the correct feature itself in first place, right? So how to fix those kinds of errors? Because everything, whatever tools we are talking, like we say, or even we go, you know, we move up forward, then we will talk about regression and all. <clears throat> so everything boils down to features, right? So since you have... Uh, yes. You know, uh, in yes, practical so, experience, I'm asking correct, this question. Correct, so how correct, to deal correct, with that kind of error? I'm not able to identify the feature itself in first place. Correct. See, typically, the people who are, see, once you run some analysis, right, whatever analysis it is, forget fancy you know, uh, machine learning algorithms, even simple analysis, right? You're looking at just cross tabs and you're presenting some data. It is always reviewed by a domain expert. Na? Nothing will be ever presented or taken forward without a domain expert looking at it. Without a domain expert looking at it, it will never be, uh, it, 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 in real life, it never happens that way, right? So if you are, if you are, if I go and tell, uh, 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 like you have worked in Pepsi, if I go and tell uh, the Pepsi sales head that, you know, distribution is not important, that's what my model is saying, he will throw his slipper at me, right? So it will, like, Eventually, you will know because you'll know the industry. That's why in the industry expertise is very, very important. Models and all that aside, so uh, so eventually that that reality check will happen. GP, it will never happen that because you will even if there is a data scientist, they will be kind of working no, data guy. No, okay. Let me, let me be specific now. Say for example, a machine is going, you know, meeting breakdown uh, frequently, right? Hmm. And engineers are not able to identify the real factors which is which is leading to breakdown, right? And they yes. are subject matter expert. Even Karthik sir, you can also you know share your inputs. It's a just um, it is not that I am asking directly to Basu. It's a open ended question like how to fix the feature problem. In the first place, I am not able to identify the feature itself. Okay. So I am, also what I'm trying I, to say. Yeah, I I will just answer that in one line and pass it off to uh, Ravi. Uh, yeah. See, typically. In my experience, that generally doesn't happen because they will have people on the shop floor will have some idea. That's my guess. I'll leave it to Ravi to answer in that context. No, I will just tell you, some of you may have already, many of you have already heard this story. During Second World War, <clears throat> there were a bunch of statisticians who were actually involved in manufacturing and everything. And they were also put to work at reinforcing the aircraft. Ah, I know this. I know this. Yeah. I know this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what they were looking at was when the Good aircraft one. came back, they would look at where the bullet holes were and they went about reinforcing the area where they were getting shot at. They said, okay, this should actually improve the problem. This should actually improve them. Statistically, they just saying, okay. Now, because the wings are not having self-sealant tanks, we'll put self-sealant tanks. We'll put something over there, something over here and all that. But when they noticed it over a period of time, they realized the number of aircraft that were coming back after a fight were actually not changing. Then somebody asked the question. Somebody else who actually was un understanding the entire thing asked a question. You reinforce the entire area, but you didn't reinforce the cockpit where the person is sitting. Well, the bullet holes were not there. Then that is the right question. Why are the bullet holes not there? Bullet holes are not there because the pilot survived and he brought the aircraft back. 
if the so pilot does not survive the aircraft doesn't come back it's as simple yeah, as that so yeah. guys so, were actually looking at something else so the subject matter expert um, that is a example normally that is cited in some of these uh, de- debates that's exactly what i'm saying subject matter expert is definitely going to be required that domain knowledge is going to be required uh, to answer your question directly ganga prasad i really do not have an answer we will have to actually see what is going on observe and then mm. okay. find we, we a trend and see it out sometimes develop a solution no one yeah. from outside especially statisticians do not believe them okay we'll jointly figure it out okay statisticians okay. do not okay. believe them this is a standard practice uh, in any engineering field statistics okay. helps but without domain knowledge it means nothing it in fact sometimes it will put you on the other direction like reinforcing the entire aircraft leaving the cockpit alone actually you reinforce the cockpit you don't have to reinforce the rest of it that is what they found for better survivability you reinforce the cockpit you save the pilot he will somehow bring the aircraft back okay, let us navigate through the journey let us see what happens after four months yeah, yeah. Let us figure it out or not. after this course okay yeah yeah see sorry on, sorry on, tactics have to digress a little bit yeah no no yeah see uh see the feature extraction in ml is totally different right so i think when you say feature extraction uh i think it's more it's better to think of it as you are talking about data collection right so data collection at first level preliminary that is not, analysis that is a not that is a not feature extraction say for example we are talking about 500 features right the main features it may happen that it, it may happen that we have not covered 10 more important features and which are you know extremely important to that problem okay okay so, so see this is actually interesting because if you look at unstructured data and no amount of domain expertise will help Yeah, so I, I'll no, no, Srikant, I don't understand. I don't agree with no, that. No, no, see, 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 wait, wait. It never wait. happens that in a project, in an analysis, somebody who knows the industry is not involved. No, no, I'm not talking about industry, right? I'm talking about feature extraction technically, right? So, uh, do you understand what feature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is? No, no, Srikant, I'm not talking about that point. I'm talking about what GP is saying that what if I am missing out something? I don't even know that they are important features. Ah, okay, that is different. But say if you, if you I, I'll just tell tell you about, you know, say something like image data, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that I understand. In fact, that interesting works. thing is in in image data, we don't extract features. Do you, the 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 system extracts the features for you. It's a very the, that's one of the most recent developments in the last five years of you know machine learning. So that's uh, that's what we call deep learning, right? So what is it there's so much of hype behind deep learning uh, machine learning a large part of this hype is driven by these systems called deep neural networks which learn what features to extract themselves right of course structured data i i agree right neural networks are not so good but if you come to unstructured data like images for example image classification right you give an image of a cat uh, you you give an image of a system i let's even take a, a manufacturing example right you have defective products versus non defective products you have images of them no you want to build a classifier how do you how do you extract the features okay this is a different kind of i mean this is the more technical feature extraction right from an image how do you extract the features it turns out you don't extract the features we have de- we are we are at that stage of machine learning deep learning ai whatever you want to call it where the system is able to extract the features on its own right so Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think you, I yeah, understand you, that your question yeah. is different. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, Srikant, in that case, in those situations, you don't even need the features because I, what will I do with the feature of a photograph? I have nothing. I just want to reconstruct the the photograph back in a proper no, manner. No, no, no. You don't. No, you don't want to reconstruct. You want to extract insight from the photograph, right? Or whatever. So, it's basically breaking it down into features and then it compares the features. That's what it does. Correct. no it's it's extracting features right what is a feature in if you given if you if i give an image what is a feature it could be anything it could be round nose big eyes you know small ear uh, it could be anything depending on what images are right? okay how will you extract that I, that's what i'm saying i will not extract it because i don't know uh, i don't the model doesn't that model deep learning model does it work in a way where Uh, i can extract features it just identifies the most discriminating features which is what feature extraction right it is doing the part which humans used to do 
yeah correct 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 okay that way yes yes, yes. Right? That so way. yeah, yeah. I, I i imagine right. different question i i think no no, no i got it got it i i i no no i got what you're trying to say i got it now. yeah perfect perfect yeah. So that type part, that part I totally agree, right? In fact, in the last session also we were talking about this, right? Without without domain expertise, you cannot without domain expertise, you cannot actually draw insights, right? You can only say, oh, this is a good principal component, or you can say, okay, this is all good. Right? Without that, I think there's no point uh, doing yeah. data science. Right. Yeah. We have finished two hours just on philosophical questions. <laughs> I won't send no, all of it. The first part of it does, of course. No, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. So I have one question here. Yeah. Uh, what is said is that uh, domain expertise is necessary. But then, if the uh, in the unsupervised uh, learning, the model itself is learning and you know carrying out the analysis and giving us the features. So do you think that at one point of time, domain expertise will not be required? No, the, my See Absolutely. the 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 it will give you some principal components and you look at let's take PCA you look at the principal components it has to make sense from an industry business perspective if it doesn't make sense then you'll have to go back and investigate why there is why this is not making sense is there an issue with the data or what is going wrong right so at some point that understanding of the market will come as a filter. No, data science is as good as the data that you provide, a... isn't it? So. Uh... That's I have one question is. here. Uh, see, as a human mind, it may not be possible for us to say uh, store, uh, let us say, some thousand or a two thousand or say, let us say, one million cases. But definitely, if a machine is being used with massive storage capacity and neural networks, uh, quite possible that uh, domain knowledge may not be. I mean, a stage may come when you know. Uh, the domain expertise of a machine may ex exceed the domain expertise of a human being. No, no, no. Yes, you, are, you are misunderstanding, uh, Anil. What I meant by domain expertise is not that the uh, the the model will be any different or what you are running will be any different because a domain expert is sitting next to it, next to the model. Right. What I mean is, eventually, once you get the entire thing output, it has to be vetted by somebody who knows the industry to see if the output okay. look correct or not. That's all I'm validated. Saying. Validation yeah, of the correct, 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 correct. Okay. I don't mean no, no. That kind of processing humans cannot do it now. They could never do it, right? So hmm. it's more about. Okay, is it making sense or not? If I come back and tell you that, uh, which industry do you work in, Anil? Uh, banking industry. Yeah. If I come back and tell you, my model is saying that you know somebody's salary is very highly correlated with his height, right? You will say, what nonsense are you talking about? Right. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So it's that. That's what I mean by domain expertise. Okay. Yeah, one but see, certain directions. Mathematics... Go on, please. Sorry. So, so the certain directions of development are uh, in AI, right? So are troubling, right? So if you look at, if you would, you might have taken a look at ChatGPT and what it's doing, right? Have you have you seen what ChatGPT is doing? I oh. Yeah, but there's that. a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, Amazing debate going on globally on that. Yeah, yeah. I've been following what's going on. In right. Time. So these large, so these are called la large language models, right? Models. So in fact, it started off very small. All these language models, but they seem to be quite good. So yeah, it, it recently passed some. I, I think some MBA exam also it passed, right? So that, that's what lots of are things. Lots of things. LSTATs is passed. Harvard, some whatever exam it passed, it passed that bar exam, lots of exams. Right. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of I thought this might this wouldn't happen, but yeah, it's apparently this is a big thing. So there is this guy in uh, this is very interesting development, Shrikan. I'll tell you if there is if I uh, catch hold of the update. There's this guy in one of these uh, Stanford or Princeton somewhere who's writing another program to identify whether the output is from chat gpt or not oh okay okay this is actually to it's like checker maker this thing right there now that, that is great yeah so because now if the biggest problem is if students start submitting these assignments how do you know true true yeah right i thought it was a fantastic idea so that's a counter vaccine to chat gpt correct 
one more point probably uh, it's more of a question all this math that we are seeing here is not something which was developed in since 2000 the math was already there math is at least 200 years math was there for a long time Two, three hundred years. The reason why we are able to do it is because of computing power. True, true, yeah. So interesting thing is actually it's not just computing power, right? This is true. Uh, what whatever you are saying is true, but there are also better algorithms that we have developed. For example, a neural networks, right? Neural chat GPTs at the end of the day, its backbone is some deep neural network. So we study neural networks in week twelve. Neural networks were kind of introduced way back in say seventies, eighties. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. So, but they didn't take off. There, there was a period of what what we call AI winter. winter. Right? So, so and then because there was no computation power. Not just that, right? So GPUs GPUs came in say 2010s. The GPU Correct. what Correct. we call general purpose GPUs. It was also a bunch of you know novel ways of getting these neural networks to train on large data. So large data sets is also important. So there's compute power, as you said, and then the availability of large labeled data sets, right? It's not correct, just correct, 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 data sets. correct, and correct. Those novel algorithms to train them, right? The confluence of these three kind of is why 10 years down the line, this is where we are. Yeah. So, but you are right. Uh, you are PCA, right. PCA was developed in 1900. Ah, okay. Actually, 1900, 1900. Hmm. Right, so it's 120 years old. Right, even regression is from the days of, let's say, Newton, Gauss. Ah, ah, everything is from that 300 years era. See, there is one other point I wanted to mention, Srikant, when you said deep learning. To me, to my, there's again a uh, paper on this. I'll try and get you. See, there are two kinds of problems in data science. One is what is called as Y hat and what is called as B hat, beta hat. Okay. Yeah. If you already know this, tell me. Otherwise, I won't go. No. Yeah. Okay. So Y hat is where I'm only worried about prediction, OK? I don't care about anything else, right? I want to uh, you know, uh, recognize an image, right? Uh, in such cases where the output is purely prediction oriented, I don't know what I don't I, I don't care what goes into it. I don't care what is making it predict correctly, nothing. Then why hat and deep learning works? Beta hat problems. For as of yet, for beta hat problems, I'll explain what beta hat is. Beta hat problems, deep learning doesn't model, doesn't work because it, it's a black box. Okay. Right, right. Beta hat is when you want to understand what is driving the output, right? Beta basically beta is the beta coefficients in regression. That's where the word is from. Okay. okay. Beta hat. Right. So suppose I come and tell you uh, your business will grow by 20% next year. The next question the CEO will ask is, Achha, what is going to make it grow by 20%? Right? Mm -hmm. Then you need all the variables which are driving that growth. Right? It mm -hmm. could be better advertising. It could be more investments. It could be new products, whatever it is. Right? When you want what is contributing to that growth, right? then deep learning will not matter. Uh, deep learning will not help. You will need these kind of machine learning models, regular machine learning models. Same thing, like for example, if you want to understand if somebody will uh, default or not on a loan, if you're only interested in knowing whether they'll default or not, uh, uh, your deep learning model is fine. But if you want to know why is he defaulting, then you need a regression or anything, logistic regression, whatever. Right, uh, right. There is a distinction in where we can use what. As of mm, right. that may change. Yeah, this basically interpretability, right? The whole question. Correct. What are the drivers of that output? Right, right. Okay, I think we have crossed the time. I think. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Srikath, you'll update these slides also, right? So uh, there are so yeah, I have some notes that I've created as a part of this. I'll up upload them. Yeah, yeah. Whenever you have the time, clean it. When you clean it up, you can upload it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sir, please update the YouTube link also, sir, of last session as well as today's session. Yeah, yeah. Last YouTube session I updated. It's in the Excel sheet. No, no. Link is, no, link is still not updated, sir. Link is still not updated. Uh, in link the Excel link. sheet. No, I mean, the Excel sheet that we maintain as a part of the course. It yeah, is there in the supplementary sure. content, right? It is It is okay, there, no? Okay. okay. Live session. Live session. calendar is not updated because Calendar, yeah. Don't follow the calendar because I this okay. the sheet is there, right? I I 
Okay. I have shared the sheet uh, with you. And you can also share it so here. You got it. You got it. I, I'll go through that. No, sir. I got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. okay, then. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Sir? Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Well, Bye. So, uh, will, for the upcoming weeks, will we be having a solve with sessions like we had in MLF? Uh, no, it will be at most at this level, right? Not not anything more than this. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.